Good evening. Labor is confident of finding the magic 47 seats to form government, but a final election result might not be known for weeks. Counting's continuing, but there are at least a dozen seats in doubt, some with the whole field in a photo finish. Look at all these women! Yeah. <laughs> It's been no picnic, but winners are grinners. And Anastasia Palaszczuk has reason to smile. Labor's won 43 seats and needs just four more. We are still confident about achieving a majority. So did everyone get a good night's sleep? There's no official winner, but there is a biggest loser. Overall, the LNP did worse with Tim Nichols than it did with Campbell Newman. A number of his MPs either going, going or gone. Labor's losing seats too, but it's gaining a lot more. The votes have been cast and we just wait for them to be counted and we'll see what happens and what uh, the outcome of the people of Queensland is. <laughs> Labor's masterstroke was making One Nation the enemy, but it's One Nation preferences that helped Labor and hurt the LNP. It's another seat where your preference is going to elect a government that despises you. One Nation is likely to win one seat, with many voters angry Pauline Hanson wasn't on the ballot paper. It's not over yet. The it's not over till the last vote is counted. The Greens could well claim the Brisbane seat of Maywa. We may have made history in Maywa. Did we do that? An independent has won Noosa. This community is very determined. It's a unique community. And uh, Noosa is ready to, to surge forward in a, in a leadership role that is, is of the people. While the candidate Labor rejected in Rockhampton is coming oh so close to revenge as an independent, Cather's Australian Party looks set to grow from two to three. Particularly in this election, I think more than ever, this feeling of Queensland being split into two. There is the southeast, and then there's uh, rural Queensland. It's not hard to feel neglected. Queensland's verdict was ultimately divided between Bush and City, left and right, past and future. In other words, crying out for a leader. Queenslanders are not red or blue. We are maroon. Yeah. Shane, should Labor be feeling so confident? Alison, they don't have to wait for every seat to be decided. Only the 47 that they need to form government. Uh, the LNP is fairly confident of getting 43, but a lot of things have to go their way. It's very fluid yet. Uh, the seat of Townsville's in play, I'm told. And even the seat of Cook that Labor was confident of winning might yet go to One Nation. So uh, this has been an extraordinary election among extraordinary elections. It hasn't been people's first or even second choices that have decided it, but their third, fourth and fifth. Alison. Very interesting indeed. Thank you, Shane. Now let's go live to Nine's Chris Yulman in Canberra. Chris, you watched it all unfold last night. What are the federal implications of this Queensland poll? Well, Alison, none if you believe the spin and surprise. There's now coalition research circulating that shows LNP leader Tim Nichols wasn't known in the regions and wasn't liked in the cities, and that the party was also carrying the weight of despised former Premier Campbell Newman in its saddlebags. So the Prime Minister says he wasn't the issue. That was a state election fought on state issues by competing state leaders. The LNP in Queensland is on life support and Malcolm Turnbull's leadership is terminal. Well, Alison, it's pretty hard for Malcolm Turnbull to argue he won't wear any blame when one of his own MPs publicly links him to the shocking loss of votes to One Nation, as George Christensen did today, proving yet again that the PM's most lethal enemy is his own backbench. All right, Chris, thank you.